Good morning and welcome back to Weekend Walkabout in our gardens and years virtually. We're now bringing you our third set, our third portion of our webinar, <coughs> which is from our stumpers department, talking about landscape material management. We're coming to you from GardenAZ.org. I'm Stephen Nicola. I'm Jan McConovich, and the voice that you will hear keeping us on track on questions and answers is our daughter, Sonia Nicola, who moderates wonderfully. And our stumper section as uh, our articles that start with why is it? Why is it that this happens? Why if I how have, come? Yeah, how come? If I put matching plants on either side of the door or gate, they don't grow the same way. That's where we put those kind of articles. Why is it that kids materialize in the driveway if you have a pile of mulch or topsoil and they never bring a shovel or broom? Never. Yeah. Um, so I see this kind of effect where there are kids. Um, and you know, of course, that materials migrate. Uh, mulch, sand, even stones migrate. Oh, stones right might into migrate the house, more than right, right, yeah. um, And anytime that I see this, I, I know there were probably kids involved, they do this, but I also have watched adults manage piles of material like this and think they're, they're doing it wrong. You should never stand on what you're shoveling. You should always have a broom and be shoveling up clean to the pile yeah. all the time. And sweep that into the pile. Yeah, and, and so you should be doing it all the time. And you probably should not ever put your pile near a doorway. Um, if it means five extra steps with the wheelbarrow that you put the pile at the end of the driveway rather than near the doorway, you're probably better off. So just, just a little word of, of caution there to people who are having stuff dumped, especially if you know that you're not going to use it all right away. Um, uh, keep it covered, yep. keep it uh, out of the way because it really does gravitate all through the area. Okay, so now we can go back and pick up our other questions. Oh, we got other questions. All right. Um, so moving out of uh, vegetables, um, Stacy is asking about uh, gypsy moth. Uh, the person asking the question, this was uh, two weeks ago or last week on biological pest management, two weeks ago. Uh, the person asking the question said the worms or caterpillars are falling down on them. Squishing them was suggested to stop them, but if you can't get them all, aren't they still laying eggs or later in the season? I don't understand what Janet said to do in the fall with gypsy okay. moths. Um, so the, the gypsy moth larvae, the caterpillars, are falling out of the trees or crawling down on the trees, one or the other. They are going to crawl to a place where they can um, make a cocoon. They're a moth, not a butterfly, so they make a cocoon, not a chrysalis. They're going to, and, and that'll quite often be on the siding on your house or be on, on the bark of the tree. They will web themselves over with a little gray mass and then they'll emerge as a moth, a very, as a female, a very pretty mm -hmm. moth. She looks like she's wearing a white ermine coat. She's just a beautiful moth. Um, they will, as moths, they will mate in the fall and lay clusters of eggs on tree trunks, sides of buildings, almost always on vertical surfaces. Um, it, it, especially if it's got cracks. Right. They'll be about, the egg masses will be about a, as big around as a quarter, maybe larger than that. Um, we should probably put in pictures from when we were up north last mm -hmm. year. Um, and they are felty, light brown, fawn brown colored. Uh, they felty. almost look fuzzy sometimes. They are fuzzy, they feel fuzzy. Yeah. And uh, what you want to do is A, squish caterpillars and look for pupating caterpillars and knock them down. To scrape them off of there. We who raise butterflies know how easy it is actually to kill a, something that's pupating like that. Um, and then later in the fall and even into the winter, go looking for those egg masses and scrape them down into the ground. Let, let the critters on the ground eat them, um, but get rid of those egg masses. And you find that there's probably hundreds, I think there's a couple hundred eggs in each egg mass. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. scary how many there are. Yeah. So it's no wonder that we can hear Gypsy moth eating when in a heavy crunching. population, you truly can't you can hear, them. hear them crunching. And is it true with gypsy moths that they that they cycle? That if it's a bad year this year, that they might not be as bad in future? Is that the case, or I, I don't know if that's the case for, for gypsy moth. Um, they're not. They're although they've been here for a hundred years, a little over a hundred years now. I think um, they're not native here, so they don't have the controls on them that an insect that evolved here would have. Um, they did, they do uh, occur in waves, probably based on whether it's a good year or not, how much of a forest they managed to eat. And so mm -hmm. our state, for instance, still monitors for them and does some aerial spraying. Aerial spraying, that was one of the reasons that um, some monarchs were killed uh, 
at any rate, I don't know if that happens with the gypsum moth quite the same okay. way. All right, um, so we have some not terribly pest specific questions. Uh, did you want to do section three of the handout or are you all set? Section three. Is there a section three on the handout? Uh, yeah. On, oh, uh, oh it's that, yes, we, we included other um, garden problems because this is maybe people yeah, kind of keynote keywords. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But let's let's do the questions that people have Great. and as Great. we move over to those. Fantastic. Um, all right. So Stacy says, I'm noticing deformed leaves like cupping inward on my black eyed Susan's coneflowers and garden flocks. The new growth comes out deformed, like they're stuck together with glue. I assume this is an insect of some sort, but don't know what. How can I treat it? The patch is too large to individually cut leaves off. I'm I'm sorry to say that that sounds a lot like you've got a, uh, an infection in the crown of the plant. Um, Stacy, if you break off one of those sections that's coming up deformed, break it off all the way down at the base. Look at the part where it was attached to the base of the inside, is it clean and white inside or is it discolored? Because I think that you probably have a problem in the crown, you have some crown rot. And um, dividing it, dividing the, uh, the plant and keeping only the outside younger edges is a good idea. Moving it to a place where it hasn't been growing for a while is a good idea, but it sounds like that, that could be a problem. And it could be a virus as well, uh, um, injuring the crown rather than a, a, a fungus. I'd rather it be a fungus because that you can probably get ahead Relatively of Relatively easy. But, but the virus is called Aster yellows. And, oh. and uh, if it's Aster yellows, you really just need to get rid of all, all affected parts of the plant. Um, but you need to break that off and see if the inside tissue looks healthy or not. Great. Um, all right. Uh, where is uh, Karen? What is causing the foliage to drop off on my black walnut? Let's see. Try. Um, I think there are twig girdlers. Root problems. Yeah. Squirrels. I mean, there are lots of reasons where that they could lose they could lose foliage, but um, I'm pretty sure that there's at least one twig girdler on a, and a, and a, oh, and there's a petiole borer. There are insects that go into the petiole, the part of the leaf that attaches it to the branch, and they eat inside until there's nothing yeah. really worth keeping for the plant and it drops the leaves. And I think there's a twig girdler too that actually gets into the new twigs and so whole twigs will drop. You're probably going to need to inspect what's dropped to take a look at how it looks. Does it look like it was clipped off? Does it look like it dropped off on its own? If it dropped off on its own, then it might be a, 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 a root problem, an issue. Right. And, and if it dropped off on its own, it might be the, uh, the petiole borer that got into the inside. Uh, and it's going to live in the leaf debris over the winter, and so you want to clean that stuff up. Um, we're, we're, we're open to pictures of uh, leaves and stuff if you want to send us what it looks like. Great. Excellent. Um, Jay Kessler says, my Miss Kim lilac is all twiggy with flowers on the ends that were off-white, not lilac, and the fragrance is hardly noticeable. Ten years old or so, similar to the yellow magnolia, Next door neighbor has also lost a Japanese maple. Is this all due to last summer's drought? Um, okay, losing the Japanese maple could be drought and exposure. I, I'd set that one aside from the lilac. The lilac sounds like it may have been a grafted plant and it's reverted. Many lilacs in the, in the old days were grafted and they were grafted to privet. And privet, it's in the same family. If you think about privet flower, it looks like a little miniature lilac flower. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily have much snow. I wish sometimes it wouldn't have snow. Um, but you, you might have a reverted lilac and you might want to look and it may have layered itself from below the graft. Uh, but that's probably all that I can think of. It doesn't hurt a Miss Kim lilac. That's the one that I showed pruning back earlier. It doesn't hurt to cut them back hard. And so if you can find all the branches that bloomed the wrong way and make sure you cut those back oh, really hard yeah, and then take out your twiggy old stuff and let it rejuvenate itself, you might find that you get a better looking plant. Okay. Uh, and then back to our conversation about uh, bulbs at the start. Uh, Stacey's asking if clumps of daffodils are too large, can you just lift and separate them like you would do with irises? And when exactly. should that be done? Exactly. Yep. Yep. And those are the ones I lifted and separated a bunch here in our property. When we moved in, there were a bunch of old clusters of daffodils with uh, big, thick 
bunch coming up with two flowers. I'll, I'll lay two flowers on them. I lifted those up last year and put them all out as individual bulbs. Those I didn't cut down this year because I want those to bulk up. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I divide them all, and you can divide them anytime. Uh, in the springtime, you can divide them while they're blooming because that's when you know where you need them. Where you know you need them and where they precisely are. Yeah. Um, if you if if you divide bulbs and replant them, I tell people plant them deeper than they were. Most of the time, people don't plant bulbs deep enough, and the deeper you plant the bulb, the better it will rest over the summer, and the less it will do that dividing and becoming crowded. Mm -hmm. Someone wondered what this plant was. That's a tricolor beech. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Got got that one. Um. Okay. Sorry. And the did I miss what was the what was the when for dividing the daffodil bulbs? Oh, you could do it anytime. Okay. Great. Your your best great. your best time to do it is is when the bulbs first come up in the spring, before the bulbs have gotten exhausted, getting off to the leaves, or later as the leaves start dying back. But you we've done it anytime. Okay, and then Donna has asked in the chat, is it too late to prune a viburnum? And if I can, do I cut it to the ground? You can cut viburnum and you can cut it to the ground. I don't usually, viburnums are, are um, viburnums respond by suckering terribly. And a lot of times people will cut back a viburnum and all they get are a bunch of straight shoots coming up and they were trying to make it bushy. Um, to make a viburnum bushy, you cut back some branches and cut other branches all the way out because otherwise they just become thickets of, uh, of suckers coming in all direction. Okay, but, and that's uh, that's what I have for questions, and we are exactly at ten o'clock. Uh, so, uh -huh. yeah. Well, then we'll call that it for our our, our webinar for this week. That's it for Stumper this week. We're going to go look into uh, let's see, black walnut and butterfly bush leaves curling. And some other things, and get back to you next week with uh, with more from uh, GardenAZ.org. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much for being here. Thank Hi you everyone. Bye so everyone. Yeah. Have a really great weekend, and yeah. uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, um, Judith, those uh, ladybugs—they are great scale eaters too. Mm -hmm. So you would release them on that yuan with scale. Yep. Okay. All right, Take care, everyone. Bye now. Ta -ta.